The sound of the pop music that we hear today, and even some of the rock music, was made possible by a group of four talented and innovative young men from Liverpool, England. The Beatles' lyrics, melodies, and unprecedented global stardom changed the music world. They were larger than life. I remember in the 1960s, Beatlemania. It came all the way from this town of Liverpool to the United States and in California, we all went crazy. In 1966, a rumor developed that Paul McCartney died in a car accident. And to spare fans from grief, they replaced him by a look-alike Beatle. But they also left subtle clues on album covers and within the song lyrics themselves. Fans around the world scoured the band's lyrics, album art, and more, looking for clues to support this wild idea that Paul is dead. Now that was largely an urban legend, though believe it or not, some still hold to that. I wonder if the rumors ever caused Beatle Paul to think about his future death the way Bible Paul thought about his death. Now. Just a note, death is not the end, though it is an end. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, Bible Paul wrote that he knew he was about to die. He put it this way, I'm already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time of my departure is near. We know that Paul was rearrested, put in the Mamertine prison in Rome, and there he received his death sentence. He was a Roman citizen, so as a criminal going through a trial, he wouldn't have been crucified like non-Roman citizens, but he would have been decapitated. But get this, instead of being scared and shocked or saddened, he looked right past death. He put it this way, I fought the good fight. I finished the race. I have kept the faith. And now there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, our righteous judge, will give to me on that day not only to me, but all those who love his appearing. Boy, that's a confident response to looking at death. He knew that death was an end, but not the end. And he called it his time to depart. The Greek word is analusis, and it's a very evocative word, very picturesque word. It means to be unyoked or loosed. It's a word that sailors would use when they would pull up anchors in a harbor and set sail. It was also used in the work day when people would unhitch a yoke of oxen. At the end of their day, they were done. And so just like pulling up anchor and setting sail or the work being laid down because you're done, Paul looked at death that way. But even more than that, it's a word that was used for the pulling up of tent stakes and moving camp. I think that's how Paul viewed his death. He knew that it was an end, it was an end of suffering, it was the end of the good fight that he was fighting, but at the same time he was just moving on. He was beginning a whole new life of reward and dwelling with the Lord forever. It's the thought of eternity that kept Paul the Apostle, Bible Paul, in the race, in the fight, despite all the tough circumstances. Now if we keep this perspective, we can have peace as we are facing death too. Now here's the thing about death, it's inevitable. It's going to happen. You, you might have some idea of how long you're going to live, how you're gonna age, what your family history is, and sort of map that out. But many people that I've known throughout my life have been very wrong about their death, and many people often die unexpectedly. Of course, only God knows the number of our days. The Bible tells us it's appointed for man to die once, but after this, comes the judgment. So it's going to happen. Now you might be at this point saying, Skip, this is such a morbid video. Actually, it's healthy. In Ecclesiastes chapter seven, it says, it's better to go to a house of mourning than to go to a house of feasting for death is the destiny of everyone and the living should take this to heart. You see, with death in mind, you actually live your life differently. If you want to know how to live, you should be ready to die. When we die without regrets is when we really start living. So how do you do that? First, decide to live for God. Next, 
purpose to be faithful with your life right now. Live wisely because time is limited. Moses put it this way in Psalm 90, Lord, teach us to number our days that we might gain a heart of wisdom. And then finally, look to the horizon. Look what's beyond this life, the end of life, the final cresting over the horizon when you go into eternity. That's where the crown is. That's where the reward is, the glory, the resurrection. The truth is, you won't be dead long enough to know it. Because Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. And whoever believes in me, even though he dies, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. You know, I sort of wonder, did the rumors of Paul McCartney's death ever change his thoughts about life? Well, we just really don't know. I have a hunch they didn't. But will they change yours? What's your eternal destination? And the time to decide is right now. It's okay to be apprehensive a little bit about death, but it's much better to rest on a decision you make about life. How do you do that? Well, make the most of your time on earth. Second, die with friends around you. And so to do that, you gotta get connected to other people, not live isolated and alone. And that might mean restoring broken relationships that you have with other people. Reach out to them, ask forgiveness to them, make peace with people who've offended you or you've offended before it's too late. Even Paul the Apostle asked for John Mark at the end of his life, a young man that he had a falling out with many years earlier. And if you have regrets, ask God to forgive you and start a fresh life. It's not too late. From now on, you can decide to run the race that is before you. Fight the good fight. Be faithful to the end and be faithful for the sake of the truth. Live your life to hear these words, well done, good and faithful servant. I hope to see you there.